I like it honestly better. How many peanut butter in my face? Uh. All right, Coach Kleiman wouldn't bite on this, but what's your favorite part of the uniform on the helmet? What detail is the best part of it for you? Um, I like the cursive cats on the on the front part of the helmet. It's probably the the coolest uh, little detail that I like, but. I think it's all. It all looks good. Uh, I like how it's pretty simple. It's not not a, not too much um, or too flashy, but I think it, it looks really clean. So. And we all saw the reaction video. What was it like being in here, part of that during that, that process? I mean, watching Josh Youngblood, it's it's pretty funny. Uh, but no, we were we were pretty excited. I knew about it before um, it happened. Coach kind of told us in the captains' meeting about it. So it wasn't as much of a surprise, but it was uh, it was pretty cool. You know. It was, the guys are excited for, for something different. Um, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, on, on Twitter and stuff about some, some changes, and um, to get those revealed is pretty cool. Coach Kleiman had mentioned that he had a talk with you after the game. Just what, what was the general message that you got from him afterwards? Uh, he just told me that he was uh, really proud of the, the way I battled and didn't give up, um, the way that I led our football team, even through the midst of, uh, uh, of a lot of adversity. Um, he just told me to, to keep on doing what I'm doing, controlling the things I can control, keep trying to get better each and every day. Um, and he said it would pay off for me. So uh, it was it was a good heartfelt conversation. Um, you know, we're, we're on the same page, uh, with, uh, you know, myself and the rest of this team with him. Um, it was obviously, it was, it was a tough loss, but um, the energy and spirit in our, our team is, is nothing's changed. Uh, same with our coaches. So. We we know we gotta correct some things and get better on some things. So uh, that's what we're gonna we're gonna focus on those things this week and get ready to go play Baylor because there's a lot of a lot of similar carryover defensively that Baylor does that Oklahoma State um, did. And obviously they're probably gonna watch the Oklahoma State film and and see what they had success with and we'll have a chance to see it again or who knows what the, what the case may be. Um, you just gotta. We gotta be ready to make adjustments. I think that's the biggest, biggest key because it's kind of hard. Uh, there's not a lot of similar personnel groupings in the Big 12 to what we do um, as far as the heavier stuff. So it's kind of hard to anticipate what exactly a team's gonna do to us or play us. So we just gotta be able to adjust, um, you know, better on the sidelines. Taylor, I know it's hard to make up for Malik Knowles, but what can you and the receivers do better this week to get the passing game going? Um. You know, I, I would just say um, on my part, um, just trusting my guys, just trusting them, uh, and and um, I would. There's a lot of different, a lot of different ways, um, you know, to, to go about, you know, to go about it. But there's at the end of the day, we we gotta get open, and I gotta I gotta make the right reads and get in the ball. Um, and I felt like that was just there was just a lot of things up and down, you know, going going wrong. Uh, whether if we were having trouble getting separation, or I was getting off a read too quick, or we were missing the block up front to where I was getting pressured. Like it was just we couldn't get it clicking on all cylinders. I think that's the that's the biggest thing for us um, this week. Uh, and you know, I'm gonna. I'm going to work with those guys as much as I can, um, try to build continuity, um, build trust with them, and uh, you know that's that's all we can do. You know we got a lot of a lot of young guys out there that um, this is their first year really playing with Landry Weber, Philip Brooks, you know Joaquin even to a certain extent, um, Sebastian Taylor, like all those guys have not really played before other than Dalton Schoen. So you've got to take that into consideration. Uh, we played a you know Oklahoma State's secondary I thought was was really good. Um, Big and physical, and they had a good game plan for us. So we just got to be better at getting off, getting off uh, collisions. And guys are going to try to get their hands on us. Exactly, Baylor's going to try to do the same thing. Um, and you know, I just got to be disciplined to my progressions and uh, hang in there and, and make a make a good throw. So we've heard a lot of talk, even after good wins, about you guys trying to be the same every week. I know it's just Tuesday, but after a loss, does it feel the same, or is there a different mood uh, in the complex after that? Uh, I think it definitely, you know, woke some people up that we can obviously be beat and that, you know, we're not invincible and, uh, 
you know, we have to come to work every day and not take a day for granted because anybody can beat us, you know. I think this conference is pretty deep from top to bottom, and there's not a, a gimme win, if you know what I'm saying. So I think that kind of opened up everybody's eyes in that, in that manner that we have to really uh, bring it, you know, each and every, every game. Um, but I would say the mood and the attitude is the same. I mean, the guys in the locker room are still really upbeat and excited. Um, you know, and it's a great opportunity for us to bounce back and, and get back on track going into a bye week. So I think it's just uh, about us focusing on little details and, you know, going back and watching the film. There was just, there was just so many little detail things that if we did right, it may have changed the outcome of the game. Um, you know, not converting on, um, you know, a couple short yardage, um, third downs that were on their side of the 50 and, there's a lot of, you know, what ifs, but um, we can't control those things or look back. It's just about focusing on on today and um, this week and just putting that behind us and kind of letting that, you know, fuel us for, you know, this week. And uh, we just got to stick together and not not turn turn on one another, which I know is not that's not the case at all. Going to be the case. We have a great group of guys in our locker room that that really. Uh, you know, love each other and care for one another, and we want to win. You know, there's nobody. You know, I've, I've, you know, obviously the fan base is, you know, people saying this and that about our our team after a loss, but uh, there's nobody that was more disappointed than our football team and our coaching. I mean, we were. You could tell guys cared in the locker room. I'll tell you that. Uh, there's a lot of emotion going on, and uh, guys were were pretty upset. But um, that that was good. Good for me to. For me to see as one of the leaders on the team, I think the the you know people being bought in is not that's not a problem. So we just got to focus on little things and and be ready to go uh, go play Bailey this weekend. Got to ask you about <coughs> Elijah Sullivan. What's something that you admire most about him? What's he like as a teammate? Uh, <laughs> he. Uh, He's just a great, he's a great dude. He's a great guy, um, a great friend. Uh, he's really passionate. Uh, I love going against him in practice because he talks a lot of trash to me um, and that makes it pretty fun. Uh, and he's just a competitor. Um, I think he's a really talented football player and he's always battled some injuries. Um, and I've always really respected the way that he has handled um, that because that could be really hard um, for how talented he is and just getting hurt and not being able to play. And show what he's capable of. Um, but no, he he's a he's a good dude. He's he's, he's kind of quiet sometimes. Um, in his leadership, you know, I feel like he's earned the respect to to be one of the the leaders on the defense. Which you know he he has gotten he's grown so much um, this year in that aspect. Um, but I feel like he can he can grow even more um, in, in that and. Just I don't I don't think he realizes like how how good he can be, um, truly and just this guy's limit. I mean he's been making a lot of good plays for us. He's really fast and uh, he brings it when when he squares up with you. So uh, I'm glad that he's on on my team. That's for sure. Uh, but now he more above everything. He's just a great dude. He's a great dude. I know that he has my back through through everything. Um, you know on and off the field. I, I always know he could he's a guy that I could call or text and that he would be there for me. So uh so yeah. Scott, what do you remember about last year's game down there in Baylor? Uh I remember we left a lot out in the field. In particular myself. Uh missed a wide open <laughs> throw to Alex Barnes that may change the difference in the game. Um through two interceptions that were forced forced throws. Uh, we ran the ball really well, but I mean, they're a different football team this year on defense. They run some different stuff and have uh, some different personnel. But they're a really good football team. Um, watching them on film the past two days, like they fly to the football, they play hard, um, they're really physical, um, they get their hands on you, uh, and and they have a lot of experience. I think that's what I look at the depth chart. They have a lot of seniors on their roster. Um, and I think that anytime you have a lot of seniors and experience that uh, have been around for a while, that pays off, you know, for them. So 
they uh, they're going to be a, a good challenge for us for sure. We're going to have to be ready to go play. Uh, but now, nah, yeah, last year was a <clears throat> that was a tough one uh, when we lost. But once again, that was last year. You know, this is a lot of things have changed since then. The only reason I really brought it up was I just didn't know. I know so many people probably think that Iowa State last year was the most frustrating loss, but I didn't know if it was Baylor simply because I mean you mentioned the mm. overthrow to Alex <clears throat> and then Nick missed the ensuing field goal. Yeah. Nick then had an extra point block. <clears throat> yeah. You guys only lose by three points. Uh, I yeah. Didn't know if when you really and Alex had such a huge game, I just didn't yeah. know in your mind was that really the one that really stuck with you the most of, of any last year? Yeah, it was probably probably up there, uh, just in the fact that. Um, I felt like the Iowa State game, <clears throat> I played played pretty well and didn't leave a lot out in the field rather than the Baylor game where I made some good throws, but I also, you know, didn't put us in a position to win. And like you said, we were down three points and I mean, we lost by three points and I overthrew a wide open touchdown that we would have won the game. You know, that's what I kept on telling myself after that loss, but um, that was really frustrating and throwing two picks that were both, you know, just forces, forces. I mean, I just kind of predetermined what I was going to do before I snapped the ball and defense gave me something different than what I thought and just forced the throw. And um, yeah, those, those are frustrating, but it's a good learning experience. So, uh, you know, I've grown a lot since then. Every uh, season's different, every game is different, but um, you mentioned Alex Barnes with the 250 yards against Baylor last year. You guys have a good rushing attack this year. How important will it, will it be to be able to bounce back and have productivity running the ball this, this weekend? Yeah, well, it's going to be huge. <clears throat> it's going to be huge. Uh, you know, I think it, to be a successful offense, you have to have a run game uh, because if you can't, you can't run the ball and you're just dropping back, you know, it's, you're predictable. Everybody knows what, what you're doing before you do it and then your hands are tied behind your back and that's when the, the defense is at full advantage to to what they want to do or what they can do. Uh, and obviously in our offense, we're, we're you know, probably a run first team um, and, and, and whatnot. So we need to, we got, we got to get the run game established uh, at some point in time in the game, you know, whatever that may consist of. Like I said last week, it's it's not like a deal where you're going into it like we're gonna we're gonna run it, you know, at the beginning of the game and set up the pass. Like we got to take what they give us, and I think that's the most important thing that Coach Messingham has talked about is just taking what the defense gives us um, and executing for what's called. Um, you know, that we were, we were in some tough situations just based on they gave us some different looks than what we were expecting, uh, and that was that was tough. Uh, but at the same time, if we executed the details on some things, then it would have we had a chance to be successful on some plays, even though it wasn't the best look. So I think that's the main the main thing for us. Uh, but just you know, I think uh, our O line is 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 pretty pissed off about last week. If you uh, want me to be honest, I mean, it's they're if if anybody is mad about you know the loss, it's, it's those guys. You know they. They're a great group of guys that um, that are, are great football players, and they're going to be they're going to be excited to have an opportunity to go uh, respond this week. And um, you know, I never you know blink a, blink an eye with those guys. You know, I know uh, you know they were just as frustrated as I was as far as not being able to get things going, and you know they they fought their butts off as well. So uh, I just think that. It's, it's going to be a great opportunity for us. I'm excited to see how our team responds. Uh, and we just got to, you know, up front, it's just a, a deal of <clears throat> we were, you know, kind of just late getting off some double teams um, in the run game because they were, they, they pressured us a lot more on first and second down than we had, had expected. Um, and it's just, we were just like a tad late just getting off that double team to, to pick that guy up to spring us through a, Opening up a seam for somebody, um, which that like everything is is completely fixable. Like it's not terminal at all. So uh, Coach Riley is is going to get those guys ready to go, and they'll be ready to go. I have no no question about it.